Welcome back everybody to another episode of George's Gadgets. Today we're going to be talking about the TiVo Tarantula. Mm, not that one. No, it's not that one. Yeah, it's that one. I'm sorry. The topic of discussion today is the TiVo Tarantula. Uh, wait, give me a second. The TiVo Tarantula. It's a really nice printer and it's a Prusa i3 clone and this one runs about maybe 200 bucks. Mine's been neglected a little bit and it's gotten a little dusty as you can see. I've decided to start upgrading it though and fixing all the issues that I found with it. It comes with some cool features like this genuinely cloned E3D hotend, and I think this might have been the issue that my friend was having, but we'll find out. It also comes with this extruder, which is easy to reloading filament. That's not what we're here to talk about though. Let me rewind this a bit. We're here to talk about this guy, the TiVo power supply. The power supply that it comes with doesn't have terminals closed and also there's no switch on the cord so you have to plug it in to get power. I went to Thingverse and I downloaded this model by Elzariant. I then put the model into Slicer Prusa Edition and I decided to print this out in Hatchbox ABS but I'm pretty sure you could use PLA. So here's the power supply that the TiVo Tarantula comes with. And as you can see, the terminals are all open. And from what I gather, that's not very safe. It also comes with this cord. And the only way to power on the printer is if you plug it in or unplug it. And it's just not very efficient. I'm lazy, I like to flick a switch. So I wanted to fix it and I needed a few things first. Some terminals, I got some heat shrink wrap, some furls, some more terminals, some XT60 connectors, the rocker switch itself, this is the part that I printed out, wire cutters, some helping hands, and a soldering iron, wires, and of course, coffee. Everything that I'm doing is stuff that I learned on my own or from my father, so be sure to look it up and make sure that you're doing it properly. I'm not saying that I'm doing it the right way. All I'm doing here is I'm measuring out the distances for the different wires, and then I'm attaching the terminals by crimping them. All the wires that I got for this, I actually stole from the power cord. I ripped it apart and then cut them to size. And here I'm attaching them to the power supply and making sure that all the connections actually fit. I will throw in there that I had to actually redo all those wires because they were too long. So this is me soldering the XT60 connector. I watched a YouTube video on that and it was really beneficial and helped me figuring that out. Attach that as well to the power supply. And I followed the schematic that's actually listed on the part on Thingverse. This is me heating up the wire and then filling it full of solder. It's known as tinning. I'm not using paste, but the appropriate method is to actually use flux or solder paste. This is how it came out. So I'm attaching furls here on the end of the XT connectors, and this is so that I can get power to my fans and then power to the printer as well. I just crimp them and then I snip them so that they'll fit into the power supply nice and snug. These are the terminals that you plug it in. They are labeled positive and minus, or excuse me, positive and negative. And then you just plug it into the, the power supply. This is the first time that I powered it on, and after I struggled with it for a bit, I didn't get electrocuted, and it worked. I just want everyone to know that I did this completely on my own, with no help whatsoever. 
and uh, this is how it came out. So let me know what you guys think. And if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'll do that again. <laughs>